Because there weren't enough walls. I actually did. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Are they expanding the wall or adding a partition there? Because, you know, there weren't enough walls in the back room. It's fine. There weren't enough rooms in the back room, so we needed to, you know, room it out a little bit more. Hey guys, and welcome to GT Not Live, where, is the camera lower than it usually is, Matt? It's a little lower. I was gonna say, I, I feel like I'm talking down to, like, I, I don't know, a dwarf from Middle Earth or something right here. I know like, that you don't- Like, Gimli's down here holding his axe, and I'm like, oh, let's go into Mordor! And I'm like, hello, Gimli! I, I'm Aragorn, let's quest off! Are those references that you get? No. Great, I didn't think so. <laughs> so, <laughs> It's Lord of the Rings, man! Lore of the Rings. <laughs> Lore of the Rings! Uh, yeah, but so is there a reason we have shifted the camera? I, this... Well, I, we had to move the camera for something else that we shot recently. Right. Um, and I I like it when the camera's lower. Do you? I... You, you like me lording over... <laughs> <laughs> I think it frames the background much nicer. It does frame the background nicely, yeah, actually. Yeah, everything fits. You can see the top of Drama Llama's head. Which is rare. <laughs> that is rare. That is a rare. This is a rare. Like, if, if you're pulling, like, Pokemon cards or, like, doing a gotcha game, this is a rare yeah, episode. I can slide it up. For no, no, it's fine. I, it's just, like, as I hadn't noticed the camera until you said, you're like, starting <laughs> yeah. to roll. I'm like, okay, let's go. And I'm pitching it down here. There we go. So, no, I, I don't mind it. As I long thought... as you guys don't feel like I'm dominating you right now. Because mm. the last thing I want is for you guys to feel like I am, you know, like, attacking you. Like I'm an attacker. Yeah. You know? I, that's the last thing I think people would think of you. I don't know if you pitch like, they're, they're gonna be seeing up my <laughs> nose now. They're gonna be like, oh, Matt needs to use that like hair trimmer up there, <laughs> shove it up yeah. there. Which I know is an old man thing, and I guess I'm I'm officially an old man because I do have to use a nose hair trimmer every once in a while. Really? I do. I thought those were bad for you. Are they? Well, your nose hairs serve well, a purpose. They do, but, you know, the purpose is best when they're contained within the nose and not, mm -hmm. like, little little dangly tentacles outside of your nostrils being like, Hey, I'm peeking out. It's like, no, get back into your cave, hair. Is this too personal, Matt? <laughs> get back there. <laughs> Shove it up into my back of my head. So, you know, I, I sh you know, you shave out the little the little guys that are, you know, uh, stretching beyond their means, like you tap them back down. Is it when you like put it in your nose? Yeah, it's like, like a little. It's like a little stick that has like a little twizzle, oh. and you you stick it up there, and it goes. It's you know like the electric razors. Yeah, it's kind of like a like a very safe electric razor that you kind of like stick up there and like swirl around a little bit. It's like all right, done. How deep are you going? I I mean I don't. <laughs> I don't go too deep. Okay. No, I I, I I I guess that's not the purpose. I just you, you know want to get the ones that are sticking. I out. I don't want to say it. But it's true. I just use the tip of the of the nose hair trimmer there. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it just cleans it up. Nice, nice, you know, manscaping, right? Sometimes you just got to manscape a little bit. <laughs> totally. Yeah, nose, nose scape. Yeah. So, <laughs> the back room. Yeah, this is a back rooms video. <laughs> this is a back rooms video, and we started off talking about my nose hairs and camera angles. Uh, it, Lord of the, so, okay, Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. real quick. Go see Lord of the Rings. You're, you're a know. guy who appreciate. you're a guy who is very well read. Thank you. You are very well read. I love yes. your I love your you know tastes mm -hmm. in what you read. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. I'm surprised that you ha have you not read or seen Lord of the Rings. So here's the thing. Careful what you say next. It's like nine hours of footage. Okay. Like start to finish. And how many hours are in a season of uh, Real Housewives? Okay. <laughs> I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's their different hemispheres of my brain are being activated <laughs> by watching those different things. Yeah. And The Real Housewives doesn't feel like work to me. Okay. Uh, Lord of the Rings feels like work? Yeah, my brain's on. Yeah. Peter, and, you're like, Peter Jackson. Ah, oh, that Peter Jackson. Yeah. I like The Real Housewives because it's like an opiate. No. You know, it's, like, brain is 
off. Steph and I took our first ever like slug day in a long time mm. where Ollie was at school and we we're like, we're taking the next four. It wasn't even a slug day, it was slug four hours. We we're like, <laughs> we're going to take four hours and not be productive. And we put on below deck Mediterranean uh, and did a puzzle. <laughs> and it was great. So I get, no, I get you. Yeah. And sometimes you don't feel like investing into a movie. Totally. But one day I will. I, I promise. I would encourage you. Okay. Just, you know, Lord, you don't have to, here, let me spare you. You don't have to do The Hobbit. Okay. Don't do the Hobbit series. Cool. Read the Hobbit. Again, read them. Yeah. Because from a reading person, I, I love those books. Those okay. books are fantastic. Um, and the Hobbit is super fast, super easy read. And then the Lord of the Rings, it's thicker, but it's a fast read. Okay. Um, movies, definitely worth your time. Yep. And then you can say you did it. Cool. That's it. Okay. Okay. There you go. So anyway, you know what else is worth your time? What? The back rooms! How was that for a segue? Up there, Peter Jackson, Kane Pixels. Boom, right there. And guess what? Kane Pixels isn't going to be producing a series that's in 60K, or sorry, 60 frames per second shown on a big screen that makes everyone nauseous. Because, right, wasn't that the story that happened when The Hobbit came out? Yeah. Right? Where it's like... Peter Jackson's like, well, I got this. This movie's got to be in 60K. Why do I keep saying 60K? 60 frames per second, 4K. I feel like it was 120. Was that? It was like right? Because 60K is what we do on YouTube. 60, yeah. Right? We're used to 60. The only reason I 60K is sticking in my mind is 60 frames per second, 60 FPS. The only reason 60 FPS is sticking in my mind is because it's on a big screen. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if people were accustomed to here, instead of just pitching this out into the world, let me just look at this up real quick. Uh, why did The Hobbit make people sick? I love uh, that you type whole questions into Google. Well, because I, 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 like, Hobbit, sick. I, I, I didn't know if I would get the, like, results I want if I yeah. did, like, a couple of search terms. Why is The Hobbit making some people sick? Oh, my gosh, there's, like, a... Oh, here we go. The film was shot in 3D at a camera speed of 48 frames per second instead of the traditional 24, uh, since it captures the twice the amount of frames. So it was 48? No. Come on, audiences. You can't handle 48 FPS? Get with it, man. You guys will never be elite gamers. I don't think I've ever seen anything shot in 48 frames per second. Right? That's 40, a weird number. That, maybe that's what it... Maybe it's just like an uncomfortable <laughs> number. No, that's weird. Yeah, 40... Will your eyeballs be able to handle 48 frames per second? So that's what everyone's saying. It was 48 plus the 3D, maybe. Yeah, three. So it was 48. So we were all wrong. It wasn't 60. It wasn't 120. 48. Man, humanity's got to get tough if 48 frames per second is making us nauseous. Anyway. Anyway. Kane Pixels is in... How many frames per second? 720p. Oh, we can get 1440p. We don't know how many frames per second. Anyway, long story short, we're doing Kane Pixels. We're here. We're doing uh, some back rooms. There have been a couple more episodes uploaded in the series. And as you know, this is one that's been really fun for us to react to. One that's been really fun for us to live theorize with. Uh, as well as you guys to live theorize with us down in the comments. So uh, if you have any thoughts about what we're seeing on screen, if you have any theories yourself, where the series is headed, how it's drawing from the original Backrooms lore, leave them down in the comments below. Uh, it's been really fun for me to actually go back after these uploads and read where your heads are at and think about some of the stuff that you guys are thinking about. So um, today we have two. We have what? Autopsy Report, which was, I think, two weeks ago, and then Motion Detected, which was a couple days ago. Um, so... Let's see. So is, is there enough, is, is there exciting stuff happening here, Matt? Am I going to be blown away by what I'm about to witness? Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, You've got my word. Okay, great. Nice. All right, so let's let's hop into this. So this is Backrooms Autopsy Report. Wow. <laughs> I love that. Even more lore! Wow. <laughs> really? <laughs> really couldn't uh, come up with anything more exciting to sell that one, could you? <laughs> Do you know how hard it is <laughs> to... Do you know how, how even many... more. I, I like that. The, the, I think it's the inclusion of the word even. Like, what? Even more. Like, it was just more lore. I feel like more lore we've, would have been like, ha ha We've used that already. Like, within the past month. Have you really? Yes. It's, how many ways do you think that I can rephrase that there's lore in the game? It's, it's not even a game. In the thing. In, in, the, in, the, in the creation? I'm, I'm running out. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're running out of all the work. 
uh, more lore, secrets revealed, dark secrets, deeper, digging deeper, uh, further into the back rooms, if you... uh, story unveiled, sto lost story, lost bits, lo looking for answers, looking for more, digging deeper, deep dive. I guarantee if you scroll through the GT Live recent uploads, yeah. I've used all of those, <laughs> like... I've crossed all of those off the list. I've been doing it for 10 years! I got a wealth of them! Yeah, so at some point you're going to have to recycle. I'm just, it's a miracle that we haven't recycled many co topics, honestly. Uh, outside of FNAF 50 times. But even FNAF, it's always different. Like, that's, a, we're going to hop into this. Real quick, that is one thing that's worth coming out, co calling out when it comes to programming the main three f theory channels. One of the goals that I always have is to not, like, rehash the same educational topic a lot of times like lore you can dive in a bunch of different directions uh but like when we like dive into specific uh science or like real world topics i outside of a little bit of like cross channel bleed where you know we've talked about one a little bit you know something that we've done over here and we do a deeper dive over here or whatever very out of 10 years of doing youtube videos i don't think we've reiterated stuff too many times like there are some themes that we hit on like right now one of the big themes that's just happening in all the spaces is like ip is more important than you know the actual like content that's being produced so like people are buying ip and that's a theme but like the way that we're approaching it and stuff has been very different so uh, kudos to us that being said you're right there are only so many ways that you can make a golden freddy head exciting <laughs> for fnaf upload 325 you know, Freddy's final secret reveal, yeah. deep dive into the secrets <laughs> of Felix the Shark, Fazbear Frights, number 62. Yeah. Yeah, so I understand. I'll try a little harder. Okay, no, it's, no, you're, you're doing great. Even more lore. Even, it's, 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 let's say this, it couldn't be blamed for clickbait. <laughs> True. Although, secret, I, I will secret rooms revealed. Were there secret rooms? I guess there was a secret room there in that one. There was a secret room in that Because there was that, like, little crawl space. Yep. So that was last time. There was a crawl space. There was a farmhouse back there. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Look at you. Thank you. You, you rode the line of clickbaitiness, <laughs> but it's real. It's real. And you didn't sell it. Over, even more lore. There was. Both of those things happened. That, that is the thing. So what are you going to title this one, Matt? Um, great question. We we'll have created, to see. I'm correct. Gonna... We haven't created the content. Good. Yeah. If you had thought up the answer right away, that would be incorrect. Exactly. Because you don't know. Yeah. You might na name it Lord of the Rings Conversation. <laughs> yeah. There, that, that would, would be accurate. That would do really well. That would do real well. It would crush. Here we go. Uh, back rooms. Autopsy report. Let's hop into this. John Doe autopsy report. Okay. Hold up. That was too fast. <laughs> too fast! Wait, was there something at the very beginning? Oh, there is something at the very beginning. Oh, oh. For internal use only. Okay, so that's... I feel like I found a secret screen, though. John Doe Autopsy Report 2590, okay? So this is, I believe, coming off of... So this would be coming off of the dead body that they found um, two episodes ago, I believe. So that was where they found the guy, and he was surrounded by kind of like the fungus that was growing off of him. So I think that that's... We, we, we'll check the dates. Subject is male, um, somewhere between 18 and 21 years old. Oh, prime demographic. I estimate he, he would have watched YouTube five if days ago, but due to the severe tissue damage, it's hold up. What's sorry? What's that? I think compromise. Compromise is the death of innovation. <laughs> there, there is an attitude for you. <laughs> Don't, don't you dare compromise. We will take every inch that we can get. It's, it's hard to say for sure. Ooh, hello. Hey. Oh, the music soundtrack is so good. The cause of death was likely malnutrition. I was able to recover most of the digestive tract. So... Oh, look at that. There's your thumbnail. Actually, don't use that as a thumbnail. YouTube will flag it as, like, horrific imagery or something. Huh, okay. So, th so is this the guy that we saw before? I think so. Here. Now, now that I'm talking about it, let's actually look it up. So, this is... What's the date of this one? The date of this one is... Oh, wait. Motion detected. We're on... Auto oh, man. Sorry. Autopsy report. 2-5... And this one is missing person. 
two, th three. Yeah, okay, so two, five, two, three. So we're seeing the autopsy of this guy, not this guy, not DJ Liberty. Oh, get out of here. No! This guy. So we're seeing the autopsy of this guy, this, this one who we find right here, okay. Motion detects this next one. Oh yeah, good. skip through this ad unit too? Ooh, it's slick and compulsively watchable, that's amazing. I, you failed, I didn't see your branding. I have no idea what slick and infinitely watchable. That was a badly constructed 30 second ad. All right, here we go. The cause of death was likely malnutrition. I was able to recover most of the digestive tract. So that's interesting, already calling out there. So he died from malnutrition. So he died while either star starving to death or maybe he tried to eat the mushrooms or whatever fungus he saw growing around in the back rooms. And that also, so malnutrition, a bit hard to tell what that's related to here. We, but we do know if they're trapped in the back rooms, they're not getting a whole lot of food, or maybe they're getting these mushrooms. So either he died from starvation or eating one of those. But it, but it's worth calling out that it was not, it does not appear to have been the monster, right? Which I think is what a lot of us would assume the, the monster roam in the halls. So, things start to decay from what we would consider to be natural. The decomposition process appears to have been stunted somehow it, it's like it's like portions of the body stopped decaying and, and were sustained can we make that out at all i think this, this is probably just i think generic science imagery is this what what setting are we at 1080 i don't think making it any higher resolution is going to help because these are like meant to be old school can you make that out at all Gingerbread. <laughs> gingerbread. <laughs> that's, that's all I got. Gingerbread. Yep. Uh, nice piece of gingerbread right there. Here, hold up. This this monitor seems to be. Sin. Yeah. It, I. Uh -huh. You see how I got gingerbread. I do see. I, no, I definitely see the bread. <laughs> the ginger, I feel like it might be a stretch, but I appreciate it for the comedic value, so I'm not going to give you too hard of a time. Uh, interesting. Okay. Other areas, however, were completely overtaken by culture. Hmm. So, uh, I took uh, samples of some of the material. Okay. Here. <clears throat> it's infecting his lungs. Here, let's see. So, if this is what his chest x-ray looks like, let's... Let's look up what a normal chest x-ray looks like. Yeah, so... So here, how it's all clean and clear, here we can see that the fungus, so it seems like the fungus is preserving him in some way or taking him over in some way. So my guess, right, is that the, the fungus was in the process of either consuming him or, but if, it's, but if he's preserved, that doesn't seem to imply that the fungus is breaking him apart and eating him. It seems to imply that it's taking him over. Uh, and it's going to use his body in some way. So we see that it's kind of infecting the different parts of him uh, and preserving him. So I think like the fungus is trying to take over his body. It'll like maybe reanimate him in some way or... Because everyone's always looking for a way to re get reanimated. Everyone's always looking for an escape. You know, first it was animatronics jumping into you. You know, scooping you out and replacing your innards with innards. And now you got fungus scooping you out and... Replacing you with black spores and mold. Here. Here. <clears throat> At first, I, I thought it was a, an aggregated collection of Pseudomonas florens. Pseudo Pseudomonas florens. That's. I mean, I'm assuming that's just the fungus. Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas florens. Here we go. What was that? It's a, oh, it's a bacteria. Okay. It's a common gram-negative rod shape. Okay, it's a rod bacterium. What's it known for? Here, we're just going to do a quick search here. Uh, let's see. The name. Pseudomonas means false unit. And monas, single unit. Okay, the word was used early in microbiology to refer to germs. Specific name is uh, microbe secretion of a soluble fluorescent pigment. Huh. 
that's cool. That opens up the door to some really interesting ideas. The idea of like it, it's able to secrete something that like fluoresces under black light. That'd be awesome. That'd be amazing if at some point during the back rooms, like the async crew or whatever goes in to explore, throws up a black light, and all of a sudden there's like all this horrific scrawl everywhere across the walls that you this whole time you haven't seen, and that's like some big reveal about like the the nature of this world. That's really interesting. Um that's really, really cool. It has multiple flagella. Flagellae. Uh versatile metabolism we can found in soil and water. It's an aerobe, but certain strains are capable of using nitro. Okay, so so aerobe means it needs oxygen to survive, uh, but there are certain types that use a nitrate instead of oxygen. Um, okay, so they usually they use oxygen to survive, but they don't necessarily need to use oxygen to survive. Um, heat stable lipases and proteases. Okay, another sign. Yeah, okay. Enzymes cause milk. So these cause milk to spoil by causing bitterness, casein breakdown. Okay. Interest. This is gonna be so. Back rooms is ultimately gonna result in a food theory. Can the back rooms solve our hot food taste test? That's it. We're gonna go to the back rooms. We're gonna infect ourselves with whatever weird bacteria this is, and then we're gonna eat some hot wings from hot ones, <laughs> and we will still get ignored by Sean Evans and not be allowed on his show for whatever reason. Um, let's see. Okay, so it's. This is cool. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, it's an unusual cause, is an unusual cause of disease in humans and usually affects patients with compromised immune systems. Uh, from 2004 to 2006, an outbreak in the U.S., 80 patients in six states, contaminated saline flush, okay, with cancer patients, okay. So it's, so in general, what that translates to is normally people should not necessarily get infected with this or it wouldn't really cause a, a severe sickness in people. It's unusual unless their immune system is already compromised from some other existing illness. Uh, okay, so that's good to know. Interesting. Okay, so we've learned a little bit about this. When doing a theory, I would probably dig, I mean, I would. I would dig deeper into this to see what else this might be. Um, at first, I thought it was an aggregate collection of these, but it's going to be something different. But... Uh... It seems to be closer to a mutated strain of simple hay bacillus. Great. Simple hay bacillus. Welcome to Biology Live, everyone. Uh, hay bacillus. So it's just bacteria from a hay. From, from a hay. From a hay. <laughs> hay bacillus. How you doing? Doing great. Me and my flagelle. Hanging out. Friday fellow. Hay bacillus. Okay. So it's, it's another... Rod or grass bacillus. Uh, okay. So this is found in soil and in the uh, intestines of ruminants, which are like cows, any of those guys who like chew cud and they have like the stump, like multiple chambered stomach, stomachs, and where it just kind of sits in there. Humans and marine sponges who lives in a pineapple under the, who lives in the back rooms under the sea, SpongeBob SquarePants. Uh, as a member of the bacillus, he is rod shaped. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, tough protective endospore, allowing it to tolerate extreme environmental conditions. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so it's really hardy. So if the back rooms uh, is a really intense environment, it's able to survive. Uh, let's see, it's an obligate aerobe. That's a f uh, facultative anaerobe. So obligate, again, I'd have to look this up. Obligate aerobe seems to say, like obligate means to, it would need air, I would think. Facultative, uh, maybe certain facility, like maybe certain abilities of it don't need oxygen. That's interesting. Um, I have an idea. Yes, please. Um, what if you just hover over it and read what that is? I could. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Organism that makes ATP by aerobic respiration if oxygen is present, but it's capable of switching to fermentation. There you go. Well, fine. <laughs> you could, or, or you, you could can guess. You can use your deep knowledge of science. <laughs> And, and context clues to try and solve it like a puzzle. I don't think you have to prove yourself. I think people know you're smart. Thanks. Yeah. No. I have I have an imposter syndrome, okay, Matt? I constantly need to prove myself and my worth in my day-to-day -day life. Imposter? I... Sus! <laughs> Sussy baka! Yeah, okay. Uh-huh. Uh... <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, obligate aerobe. An organism that requires oxygen to grow. That's Okay, that's what I said. And then this is, they, it seems like they need oxygen, but they can switch to fermentation if you, there is no oxygen. Okay, there we go. 
Uh, da, 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 da. Anything else interesting here? Uh, ba, 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 description, characteristics, produces acid. Okay, habitat. Commonly found in the upper layers of soil. This is why it ends up in the gut. Yeah, this is why it's going to end up in people's stomachs and their guts. Ooh, it's found in human feces. About 10 to the 4th spores per gram. Delightful. Uh, <coughs> now, the number of spores found in the human gut was too high to be attributed solely to consumption through food contamination. Um... How do they reproduce? Actually, this is so, again, like uh, outside of general mechanisms for how this works, if this is truly the thing that's, you know, infecting things in the back room, one of the things that you're probably most interested in learning and one of the things that we would definitely want to dig into when crafting a theory around this is how it reproduces, right? Because if our assumption is like, hey, this bacteria, this fungus, whatever it is, is infecting bodies in the hopes that it can reanimate them or duplicate them or whatever reproduction is actually something that's interesting. So divide symmetrically to make two daughter cells. So it fis it, it's fission. So it divides. Um, uh, it's, it's very durable. It can remain viable for decades. Uh, it's resistant to any harsh environmental conditions. So it can survive drought, extreme pH, radiation. So, so that says that, you know, in the back rooms, it's going to be okay because it's not getting a lot of food. It's not getting a lot of, uh, you know, if, if the back rooms does have some sort of weird environment, it's going to be okay. Um, prior to the process of sporulation, they become motile by producing flagella. So they are able to produce little little flagella that will help it, like, swim along. Um, take up DNA from the environment. That's interesting. So, I mean, that doesn't mean infect a human individual and, you know, take over their body. But... If you squint at it, right, the the thing that this is based on can take up DNA from the environment. So if I'm, you know, Kane Pixels crafting the lore for the series, I would be like, oh, it could pick up the DNA of a human and <clears throat> integrate it or take over it or whatever. So that's kind of cool. Um, favorable. So they they seek out a more favorable environment. So again, that idea of if this hay bacillus is taking over a human. Maybe it's reanimating them in an attempt to get out of the back rooms, look for a more favorable environment, allowing them to, uh, you know, duplicate. So, again, is it is it one-to-one -one with how it relates in real life? No, but you look at the, the reality of how this bacteria operates and you apply it to the fictional situation that the back rooms has created to come up with, like, oh, as a creator, that's interesting to me and I can spin that off into kind of my own storyline. Um, cool. Cool. Uses, real quick, just I, I know we want to get back to the episode, but uh, uses were popular worldwide before the introduction of antibiotics. So it was a, a immunostimulatory, so it would be used to stimulate your immune system to treat uh, gastrointestinal and urinary tract diseases. Okay, so very digestive-based, makes sense, because it's a very gut-based, it's in the ground. Uh, it was an alternative medicine to help, um, you know, again, immune system. Uh, Anything else just from scanning this quickly? Test species. Oh, it's interesting. It has had a history as a test species in space flight. So when they're testing out whether life can live in space, they're launching it in, they're launching this guy into space. That's cool. Uh, it can survive up to six years in space if coated by dust particles, protecting it from UV rays. So that's what we've learned. Uh, that's how the, the back rooms is ultimately going to end. We're going to isolate this mutated strain of hay bacteria. We're going to launch it into space and not coat it with dust. No, no dust for you, hey Bacillus. You are dying up there. You missed a really cool sentence. Which one? Uh, go up. Uh, bottom paragraph. Here. No, up one. Sorry. Wait, I lost it. Oh, up one. Last sentence of that paragraph. This one? Yeah. It, it has been reported that in 1966, the U.S. Army dumped Bacillus into the grates of New York City subway stations for four days, in order to observe people's reactions when coated by a. With coded by a strain, due to its ability to survive, it is thought. What? No! Dumped bacillus. No! What? For four days in order to observe people's reactions when coded by. Huh! I wonder what happens when people get coated with a strange dust. Whoop! <laughs> Zoinks! Let me just dump it in. Hey, they could have just dumped their, like, vacuum sweepings in there. Hold up. So, this is one of those times that you read that and you're like, really? And so you go to the sources. 32. 
Profit Without Honor, White Collar Crime, and The Looting of America. So, it's, it's a book. And, I, and, so, and this is 2020. Hmm. So, I see that name, and it sounds like a name with an agenda. So, I, what I would then do is I would look at that, and I'd be like, hey, was dust ever dumped into was dust ever dumped into subway by army <laughs> by army germore exercise in new york subway in 1966 new york post from 1980 that was before they were lying about stuff army report details germ war exercise in new york subway in 1966 army scientists sprayed harmless harmless bacteria directly onto new york subway riders in 19 Throughout downtown and midtown Manhattan, the commuters paid little attention, the army said in the study, which concluded that subway systems were ripe targets for covert by a See? And this, my, my friends, is why our channels exist. This is the sort of stuff that got my channels, and why I'm excited about the channels all the time, is because you dig around, especially in food theory a lot lately, where I just find all this insane stuff in the food world. And you find stuff like this, and you're like, oh, this is the sort of stuff that we should probably, you know, care about, know about in some way. Details of the experiment, previously disclosed only in broad outline, were contained in a 71 report of the Army Special Operations Division at Fort Derrick, Maryland. It was placed under the Freedom of Information Act in response to a request by the church. This is... Forget the back rooms, ladies and gentlemen. Forget the back rooms. We're not even talking about them anymore. We're talking about the real life insanity that is this story. It was released under the Freedom of Information Act. Okay, great. In response to a request by the Church of Scientology. Hey, hey, government. Hey, army. Hey, army. Uh, Scientology here. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that time that you dumped mysterious bacteria dust on the people in the subway, and they didn't care about that. Just to, you know, we'd be curious to learn more about that study. Why? What? Oh, man. This is terrifying. How, how does this make you... For me, Matt, as someone who used to live in New York, and, yeah. you know, who cares about humanity it's and the human condition. Powders. You know. Yeah. I see this, and I'm like, hmm. Yeah. This is somewhat concerning. <laughs> I, maybe, but maybe I'm in the wrong. So I, I look to you for a more sensible approach. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> I mean, they were doing crazy stuff in the 60s. Oh, the 60s. I mean... Like, crazy stuff. We've done, epi like, our Polybius episode back in, like, that was an early, early game theory episode that very clearly put me on watch list. But where we talk about uh, MK Ultra and stuff, yeah. where it's like all the, the LSD tests and things yeah. like that, where it's like, yeah, let's just give people psychedelic drugs and inundate them with stuff and see what it does to them. Yep. That's good. We'll see if that does... Can we brainwash people using this? Maybe. Let's... Why not? Let's figure it out. Yeah. So, like, on a scale of crazy things that happened in the 60s, it, this isn't too bad. <laughs> I mean, you know. But... Uh, Dust! It does have lore implications. It does have lore implications, actually. This is really cool. I, I, cool in a, wow, this is interesting, and not cool in a, please dump your mystery dust on me while I'm out in public trying to get to my, like, day job. Uh, while I'm trying to get downtown for some soup dumplings. Uh, simulated biological warfare attack in New York, conducted from June 6th to June 10th, included the release of aerosol clouds of test bacillus, um, bacillus into stations along 7th and 8th Avenue lines. Ah, good, I was on the east side. That was west side stuff. It's no big deal. You do whatever you want to the west siders. East side. That's where I was living when I was, when I was in New York. So, okay. In the trials, one of the Army's observers reported small quantities of a harmless, harmless stimulant agent known as, hey, uh, were inserted through the sidewalk gratings, producing aerosol clouds that were momentarily visible in the station. When the cloud engulfed people, they brushed their clothing, looked up at the grating, and walked. I mean... Have you ever been down to the New York subways, Army? Maybe you haven't. Maybe that's what prompted this test. But, like, a cloud of dust landing on you is, like, the least of your concerns, health concerns, when you're down there. You're like, oh, man. Someone swept some stuff down a grate, whatever. Yeah, that's, like, a good day. Yeah, right? That, that's, like, a victory. When the person next to you literally hacks into your... You want biological warfare? Put someone who's sick 
on a subway during rush hour. <laughs> and in post-COVID world, it's even scarier now. But like, welcome to rush hour in New York. You're like, oh, come right here. Please don't cough on me. Please don't cough on me. Uh, tests were conducted without the knowledge of either the New York police or the New York City Transit. Okay, let's go back to the back room. <laughs> let's just leave it there. Let's, you know. This is why I encourage everyone to read and expose themselves to a lot of information. And that's why our channels exist, so we can do some of this research and at least get you interested in it. Let me do that. I'm not going to tell you what to think or what not to think. I'm just going to tell you that these things exist out there in the world. All right. Which it should be completely benign, but... Even more lore! Sorry. <laughs> when you said like, the idea about lore implication was sticking in there. So you can now, on the thumbnail, even, even more, more lore. Well, I'm saying if the army in the past has no. used this specific bacteria. 100%. Yeah, there's a potential that this is a government thing involved. There, yeah, there's, no, there's, there's a lot of directions that you can now take it, which is really cool. Should be benign, well, which is what we've learned. Really, I, I, I don't know oh. what to make of this. Is this a black light? Are they doing the black light thing that we were talking about? That's cool. Looks like a black light. Yeah, man! Kane! You and me. You and me. I'll say same wavelength. Mr. Beck. Ooh, we have, have a person. Uh, where this subject came from. Ooh, hey. So we have Mr. Beck. That's exciting. Oh, oh boy, okay, oh boy, okay. <laughs> We've got a frame, this is intense. This is taking a really strong shift in tone. Okay, nothing there. What do we got? Uh, can't really tell, just some lines. I'm sure they're not. Maybe some like medical close-ups of like veins or that maybe looks like, uh, reminds me of uh, worms or uh, you know, like a gut bug or something. You think? Uh, we've seen this before in one of the hidden videos. Contract? Something... What's that first word? Contract turmeric? Looks like largest contract terminate. Hmm, interesting. Longest contract. Terminated? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So maybe async was being funded to do this. And the contract was terminated mm. with the government. Maybe maybe government was like, hey, let's do a test on this. It's terminated. And so now Async's kind of going off the rails and doing it themselves. Or maybe someone has discovered this after the fact. Uh, then the pilgrims came over. <laughs> then, then you had the pilgrims. Uh, some, it just looks like some old-timey kind of footage. Max. Max P. Um, that makes me think of, like, Max Planck, but that's a complete guess. He's a scientist. Um, that's the... That's the gingerbread. The gingerbread that we saw earlier. Uh, random uh, cartoon baby. Hmm. She looks familiar as, like, a famous actress. Uh, but I'm wondering if seeing these human faces... It, 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 I'm getting kind of, like, Mandela vibe catalog... Or Mandela catalog vibes... Um, I'm wondering if they're implying that, again, like, are the fungi people out there? Because that, that's real random to have a baby and, a, and an adult just out there. It makes me think, like, oh, maybe there's a world where they're one and the same. I don't know. That's, that's pure speculation. Markets are on the rise. I think this is the missing people falling through the back rooms chart, maybe. Or it's just stock. Someone's checking their AMC stock. They're like, hold, hold their AMC stock. Duplicates, again, uh, I'm wondering if this is the bacillus, like, replicating people. Again, that's, that's a common theme that we've seen in a lot of media lately. Factories, doors, crater, moon, rocket. That's definitely a rocket ship. So I'm thinking maybe this is a bacteria from space. This seems like a lot of rocket imagery. Like rockets land, I think that's like a rocket landing or coming back down to Earth, maybe re-entry, you see the trail, and then maybe landing back down, maybe it's a test flight. Volcano. Hmm, like a huts, maybe like an island nation now. 
this is this looks like atomic test footage like right after they do the bomb they there's always that kind of like classic overhead shot of like the explosion that happens uh primates primate skull uh okay galaxy nebula space there's the back room there's more space so okay we're seeing a lot of space saturn more close-ups of different bacteria that looks like an internal structure of either a, a, a bacteria or a fungus of some form. And then him. Huh. I don't know. Uh, scary stuff for anyone with uh, tryptinophobia, right? Trip Isn't that the fear of the holes? Yeah, trypophobia. Trypophobia, that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah, so this is all frightening imagery for people with trypophobia. Trypophobia warning. Uh, cell wall uh, looks like Reagan. Uh, what what's the sixty? No, this is eighties. Uh, ninety, right? Ninety, yeah. So yeah, is that Reagan's presidency? Would right, be. I was gonna say that's Reagan. That's definitely Reagan because yeah. it's not Bush. Mm -mm. Yeah, okay. So yeah, this to me is starting to hint at maybe this is a government contract that went wrong or got canceled. Uh, space is involved in some way. That would also make sense with Reagan and Space Race and stuff, uh, which makes total sense. Um, where maybe this bacteria is a mutated strain that came in uh, from space and somehow found its way into the back rooms, maybe through a volcano. I don't know. That's That seems odd. Um, and the idea of maybe there are, are replicants or uh, double people here. So let's, let's just watch through it real quick. I know I'm doing the frame-by-frame frame stuff, but... Oh, hello. This is a thing. I was going to try not to stop it, but when you got words on the screen, you got to. Uh, to that point, the specimen, the sentiment, all serious engagements, this environment was never suited for mankind. To maintain, delusion would be... Okay, so yeah. So this is, again, supporting the idea that, it, that this project was canceled. Which is something that I, is new information to us. We did not know that, uh, as far as we knew, this was the government still like looking for the opportunity to expand into the back rooms, use all of this new space to, uh, you know, for storage, for housing, whatever. So now we're getting hints that between that contract earlier and this line right here, that this is seen as a really bad idea. It's not fit for human uh, existence. It needs to be canceled or condemned. Um, okay, so here we go. Hmm. What's the red? What is that background image? So I've got my essay written, and I've been working on it for about... <laughs> Way to kill the mood, so Grammarly! I use Grammarly to edit. Thanks, Grammarly. Okay, so here's my essay, and I'm going to click through Grammarly... So it is. There's there's his essay. Uh, okay, so what do we got? What is this? Is that... That's not atom bomb footage. Is that... So obviously you've got the, the back rooms. Now they're ripped open. But what's the red? Initially I saw... Like, initially I saw it and it looked like an upside down version of like an atomic bomb dropping. But the explosion doesn't seem to develop quite as quickly as I would expect. That's what, but like when you see such an intense bright spot with kind of that like, that's, that, no! Hmm. Can't really make it out. That's cool. All right. So, interesting. All right. So there we have it, friends. That is autopsy reports. That was dense. There's a lot in there uh, between the different strains of things that it could be. So we know it's it's a, a benign bacteria that was dumped upon people in New York on the west side, not the east side, uh, back in the 60s. Should be fine, but it seems like maybe this is a mutated strain of it coming from space based on the imagery that we're seeing in a government-funded project that gets canceled because 
it's too dangerous. Summary. That's that's it. So uh, a lot in there. That was really really cool. Uh, which leads us to the next one and the the most recent upload, which is motion detected. And this one was from a couple days ago. Uh, so let's hop into this. March 5th. Last one was 2590, right? February 5th, 1990. So we're about a month later. Yep. Ooh, look at all these great games that I can play. Get me. <laughs> Ad block! Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So they're, they're trying to make this into their office space. No, employees don't need windows or doors or modern convenience to get out of here. Just bury them under the ground. This does look a lot like the room that I edit in. <laughs> you have a window right there. Thank you very much. I don't edit in here. No, I know, but I'm saying, like, if you oh. need a window, <laughs> there are, you have access to windows at any point. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the room I edit in. I'm in a cave. I'm secretly in the back room. I'm going to get infected by space fungus. Listen, just because I'm trying to build lore into the channel doesn't I... mean that you have to shut me down. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fungus replicant, obviously. There's a fungus among us. There is a fungus among us, and his name is Mirror Matt. <laughs> Uh, true story, I, the, the place I did work looked a lot like this, um, where there was no, you literally felt like you were working in a cave, it was, it was rough. I got you off heater and everything, man. <laughs> Y'all treat me nicely. Yeah, good for heater. Because there weren't enough walls. I actually did, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> are they expanding the wall or adding a partition there? Because, you know, there weren't enough walls in the back room. It's fine. There weren't enough rooms in the back room, so we needed to, you know, room it out a little bit more. Did they bring the tile in? I th Yeah, they must mm, have. They got tired of the sopping wet floor. Yeah, they're like, you know what, let's... Fair enough. Right. Although, I, I warned them against that because that's just black mold waiting to happen <laughs> at that point. If they're worried about this hay bacillus. Putting tile on top of a, a, a wet, moist floor without remediation, you're asking for trouble. Just saying. That thing, again, looks like the tripod monster that I call out later. Like in the first episode, I'm like, it's a tripod monster! The, that camera tripod looks like the tripod monster. Or maybe it'll grow up to become one. Oh, music soundtrack's great. Kane nailed this. Oh, wait, here we go. Seven modified video cameras are optimally positioned along lateral division A. Each camera has been modified to send out an alert and begin recording when motion or substantial noise is detected. Uh huh. Oh, we're playing Five Nights at Freddy's now! Five Nights at Backrooms! Got seven cameras. Are we gonna be flipping between the cameras, watching for noises? Oh, he's even giving us a map? Oh, buddy. It's interesting camera placement. Huh. Oh, wow. I like that if anything comes in from this, you're, you're just, there's, not a, there's no helping you with them. They're like, ah, you know, this one we don't need. That's an interesting layout, that they would look at it that way. I guess that allows you to see across Huh, interesting. Okay, seven cameras. And so we're watching main camera, is what I'm assuming that's telling us. This guy. <clears throat> this is so cool. This is cool. Setting up, setting up for the eventual video game, where you sit us down on a couch and we hop between all the different camera angles. <laughs> Pretty soon it'll have us winding up a music box to prevent the fungus from popping out. Oh no! It's the marionette fungus. Yeah, music soundtrack is the top. Okay, following is a compilation of all detected motion alerts received during the night of Monday, March 5th. Okay. Hmm. Analog horror, here we go. 1939, motion. Three researchers past Central Division D. Yep, there they are. Hmm. <laughs> you already know where this is headed. You're like, oh no. What am I going to see? 20. Okay, so that's 8 o'clock. They return. Yep. 
It's interesting. Are they still using the ropes? I've not seen them carrying the ropes. Supervisor passes cam six. Wait, sorry. Yeah. Pause it? Yeah. Go back. To where? Uh, only two return. Wait. Right? I, I only counted two people. Huh. That's a good point. Yeah, maybe we, maybe they lost someone. Well, because if you remember that one guy got like... Taken away. Well, that was... I mean, you're right, yes. However, is it the same... That was this one, right? If you're trying... Oh, great. Right, V-shred. 229. So it would be a different day, is what I'm saying. What was the date on I'm the previous footage? Fat, Sorry, one second. Doing cardio. Um, this we we got to do the ad blocker on this. There we go. Especially when we're doing these reactions. AV30. Right? So this is the one where he disappears. Prized of no... 229. So this is 229. This is 3.05. Oh, okay. So, so you're right to call out that the, the other worker disappeared. And, and this could very well be it, but it's not the same instance gotcha. is the only thing I'm throwing out there. Uh, you're right, though. Someone could have disappeared. Although I feel like they wouldn't be walking back as casually if they had lost someone. So three guys walk past. Two come back. It's a good call out, though. Or is that a third guy in the middle? Yeah. Is that a third guy in the middle? I don't know. I don't know. Resolution's tough. Yeah. Right? Curse you old cameras. Enhance! Enhance! I think it's two. Their, their movement's too seamless. I think it's only two. I think you're right to call out that it's two. This is fun. I like this. I hope you guys like this. Just so you know, this is also like what we do when it comes to like theorizing. Like this is this is what I do, and then I research, and then I read. I start with Wikipedia to refresh myself, and then I like dig deeper into all the different sources. Noise detected. Okay, so that is. So that's the thresh so the threshold barrier that so now we know the threshold barrier is that door that is, that opens us up into the back room so that's them shutting that big door threshold barrier okay one o'clock don't enter the back rooms at 3 a.m hmm it sounded metallic but there was also like breathing in there Microphone failure. <laughs> huh. Interesting. Oh, here it is. 3 a.m. Almost 4. No comment. This is... Where is it? There it is. What is it? What are you? <laughs> oh wow, you even high look at this. This is great. It's like <laughs> Octopus. Image upscaled and enhanced. Weird. Huh. What? That's it? Oh no! Okay. Invisalign? Huh. That's really interesting. Okay, so that is very different from the monster that we saw in the first upload. Um, or maybe it's similar. It's just like he's able to like morph himself a little bit. He does. He feels um, uh, very octopus. -y. He feels very, again, like I keep going back to this idea of it being a fungus, but a, what they're telling us is that it's not. It's a bacteria. That was weird. I saw two human legs. You saw two humans like upside down? No, like one person, two legs. In Oh, God. Sorry, Sc Scream is now streaming. We'll we'll t log into my account where I have the Google stuff. Okay, wait. So you saw? So wait. That looks like a person crawling out of the ceiling to me. Really? Yeah. It's 
See, that's his arm. That's one of his legs. There's the other leg. That's his butt. Oh, that's interesting. So you're, huh. And then he crawls back in. Oh, interesting. I see I see how you would say that. But also, I am aware of the party goer lore. And so I might just be reading into that. Oh, educate me. Because I, I, again, I've stayed fairly blind to it. But what is the part? So now, what is the party goer well, lore? Wasn't it just that there are people in the ceilings? I mean, yes. Yeah. But, well, I know that that's a thing. I don't know much about them. Do you uh, know more beyond that? Okay. No. So. No, now that you're, now that you say that, you're totally right. Like, I could see it as an upside down person, like, walking or crawling along the ceiling, the wall, whatever. To me, and that's, that's interesting. Because to me, when I saw it, I'm like, oh, it's like wavy tentacle, like wavy dark tentacles. Yeah. Um, or... Yeah, so so like maybe it's the monster like morphing or something, but it it felt like inhuman or, you know, like it had some sort of uh, pseudopods, right? Pseudopods. Sure. That's the name of pseudopod. That's the fake arm that like amoeba create. Flagella. Flagella's the the tail. <laughs> Ooh, flagella tail. Uh, not to be confused with the cilia, which are the little hairs that go. Wee! Flagella. Pseudopod. Duh. Take that one to your science class, you know, biology class. Show it to GT Live. We should be watching this in, in class because this is what we do. Um, that's cool. Uh, th I love the fact that they're setting up this this gimmick of the seven cameras. I, I mean, again, it's really leaning into the analog horror stuff, and you can start to see like this is where the paranormal activity style stuff starts to happen. Um, but it's very cool, and you're we're starting to get the drip feed of lore. Drip feed of lore. Drip feed of lore is, is actually really compelling here. Um, and we're getting some really interesting stuff. The other thing I was wondering, though, is, is with this, like, black monster, whatever it is, person, flagella, pseudopod, is that that red dot on him? I noticed that he's not pure black. There's, like, a little red dot in there as well, uh, right where, where the butt would be. He's got the red butt. Um, I don't know if that's meant to be something. But it doesn't seem to be like an artifact of the low quality of the image. Because it does track. Like whatever that differently colored spot is, tracks with that location of this creature back and forth. So it comes in and it leaves. So I don't know what that is. Do you see it? I'm not convinced that that's not an artifact. Really? Yeah. Because the whole thing is pure black. Not the whole thing. Like, the, uh, the if you're looking at, like, that as his arm, his arm is a different color. Like, the the whole bottom half of whatever it is isn't black. Mm. Interesting. I guess. I don't know. I think that's just because it doesn't fully emerge from behind the wall. Could be. Yeah. Anyway, remains to be seen. But we learned a lot. Uh, we learned a lot. We learned a lot. More lore. Even more, more lore. <laughs> Uh, this is cool, man. Uh, I love it. I can't wait for the next upload. I can't wait to... I mean, I've been waiting to do a theory on the lore part of the back rooms. At this point, we might have enough. But I'm like, oh, I feel like we've discovered enough things that we can kind of put stuff together. Maybe mix in some of the existing back rooms lore to come up with a prediction theory of where this is headed. Um, I've, been, I've been kind of dragging my feet on it just because I wanted to make sure that there was enough there to talk about. But I think now between... The mysterious, like, farmhouse that was discovered, people disappearing, voices in the walls, weird, uh, you know, bacteria, and the army experiments would be really interesting to pull in. Uh, I, we might have enough, so I, I might work on this. So expect to see on Film Theory in the next, like, two or three weeks an episode on Backrooms. And who knows? Who knows what uploads will happen between now and then? Uh, but really, really cool stuff. Really, really interesting. Again, uh, there's so much awesome horror stuff uh, that's happening on YouTube right now between this and Mandela catalog, all, you know, the Gemini home entertainment. I haven't checked on in a while, but like, there's just so much awesome stuff. Uh, I know salad fingers just got an update. Uh, you know, it's maybe like one episode a year or whatever, but I'm excited to see salad fingers reemerge. Uh, just so, so awesome. And this is where all the exciting stuff is happening. So 
thank you guys for watching. Thank you to Kane and all the other creators out there who are making awesome series like this. And I can't wait to see what else you do. Uh, I see that you're closing in on a million subscribers. So huge congratulations, super well-deserved. Uh, if you are not subscribed to Kane Pixels, please do that now. Uh, you know, push him over a million if you can. Uh, because that would be fantastic. But also, you know, it helps you stay updated just like I stay updated to him. Matt, you are not subscribed. Uh, uh, subscribe. Press Boom. the button. There it is. Cool. I press the button. Thank you. I will not ring the bell, though. Fair. Because I'm not a bell ringer. <laughs> but other people could be bell. Because I, I just I don't want to ring a bell. I don't want to commit you to any sort of notifications. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I understand. But you're subscribed now. So now you're not... Been here since 945,362. Congratulations. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. And remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video. A video for you. See ya! Yep, definitely missed that outro.